Hey everybody, this is Captain Kyle, and welcome to Phantom Spotlight's continuing series on the future of comms. I have Mitch Halleck with me. He is the showrunner of Terrificon and CT GamerCon, mm -hmm. and we are going to be talking about his upcoming shows and the challenges that he's been facing due to the pandemic and everything else. How are you doing today, Mitch? I am happy to say I'm healthy, which is cool, and I hope you are too. It's so been, um, yeah, it's been uh, tricky the last year or so, but if you could say that, I think you said it's something that's worth a million bucks. So that's, I'm going with, I'm healthy and I'll take it from there. That is awesome. And staying healthy is definitely something that's very important, which is why the last Terrificon that was scheduled, mm -hmm. you had to cancel it. Um, yeah. Tell me yeah. what that was like. <laughs> You know what? Actually, it started a lot earlier. Terrificon is always in August. And when I did CT GamerCon, which was scheduled to be March 14th and 15th last year in 2020. So all February, just like a snowstorm or a hurricane coming up the coast, you just keep hearing more and more and more about news about this coronavirus, COVID. No one knows what it's about. So I called the Mohegan Sun and there's a huge expo center here in Connecticut. And I said, you know, I, I got a feeling about this. I, I don't think I want to go ahead with this year's show. And they said, why? I said, well, I don't know. I'm hearing a lot about the stuff on the news and they're avoiding crowds. And I, I know it's crazy. No one's telling me I have to do it. The governor hasn't shut the state down. None of that happened yet. And they had just done PAX East in Boston, which is a huge huge video game and gaming conference. That was literally the week before me. That's like 60, 80,000 people. Mm -hmm. But I said, we're going to pull the plug. I'm sorry. I'm going to err on the side of caution. I'm not doing the show. And everybody was kind of upset. They're like, what are you doing? It's a week to go. I bought my tables. I got my tickets. I'm all set to play Super Mario Brothers, blah, blah, blah. I said, let's just not. What happened three days later? Boom. They shut everything down. I mean, everything got shut down. Only essential stores were open, like gasoline stations, grocery stores, and that's it. Liquor stores, too, but that's another story. That is essential. Yeah, everything was closed. And it's like all the events that were planned, besides my gamer con, everything was closed down. Nothing was happening. Sporting events, rock and roll concerts, movie theaters. So I was kind of ahead of the curve by a few days. And then... Honestly, we didn't know, and everybody in the world listening to this probably knows the same thing. No one knew what was going to happen. And just like a snowstorm or a hurricane, you, you, you batten down the hatches, you get your milk, bread, and eggs, you stay home, you get ready for the storm, and then the storm hits, and you, you muster through, and then it's over. And then you get out, and you clean up, and you're back to where you were. So we're thinking, oh, April, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. May maybe June and every week it seemed to get farther and farther along. And then the numbers here in the Northeast and New York and Connecticut were really bad. And it just kept going up and up and up and up and up. And you're like, Hey, when's the storm going to stop snowing, you know? And it didn't stop snowing and it just kept getting worse. And now I'm thinking, Oh, well, what about August? And what about terrific Am I going to be able to pull that off? And then come May, Unless a miracle happened, there was no way that the COVID numbers were going to dis disappear overnight and a, a cure was going to be found. So I had to pull the plug on that show. And hopefully now here we are almost a year later and you could see, you know, the sun coming through the clouds with the vaccine and the numbers are dropping, especially here in Connecticut. We're like number three in the country for the amount of vaccinations that have been distributed and that our COVID numbers are under 2%, I think it's like 1.7 today as I'm talking to you, which is really great. And fingers crossed, it's just going to keep staying that course and it's going to keep going down and down and down. And then come summer, we'll be able to open the doors again safely and have a crowd. We might not get tens of thousands like we used to. I don't know if that's even allowed or if people are going to be hesitant to come out. But I do know that there's going to be something back it, it's as long as it's a good show, as long as everybody has fun, as long as the vendors make their money, they sell their comic books, the fans get autographs and sketches and artwork, and they dress up as their favorite character. I think no matter how big the show is, whether it's a couple thousand or tens of thousands, as long as people have that, that feeling that they had a great time and they walk away from it safe and sound, I, I think that's the best you could hope for right now. Oh, absolutely. 
I, I know you've been quite active in podcasts. Have you thought about doing any type of virtual panels during this time? You, you know, I have. I've been talked. Uh, I've been approached by some folks. I, I have a lot of friends that do other podcasts besides the one I do. I have a friend, John Suntris, who does the Word Balloon podcast for 14 years now. John's pretty big in the comic book industry. He talks to everybody. He's been involved with some online uh, cons, if you want to call it that. They'll do some interviews with some actors and some comic book creators. And then they set up things with CGC where you can get some autographs and things. I mean, it's been successful, but I'm going to be honest with you. In my opinion, I don't think it's going to ever replace the the physical in-person convention. You know, oh, I agree. I mean, as, as much as this is fun talking to you right now and I do a YouTube show with my friend in Australia, there's something tactile. You, you Believe it or not, as much <laughs> as it's maligned, I miss the smell of a Comic-Con, that sweaty spandex smell, the, <laughs> the guy who hasn't showered in about two weeks, but that moldy smell of the comic books that just seems to waft my sinuses and cause me to sneeze for days. I miss all that. And uh, I just don't think you can get that online. Oh, I definitely understand. And even the ones that are doing the virtual cons want to get back to in-person cons because there's a lot of stuff that is missing yeah. um, from a virtual. The virtual is a nice stopgap measure, nice way to, you know, for the con to get some exposure and yeah. the celebrities to keep doing stuff. But yeah, it will not replace physical cons. From a brand building point of view, because I did uh, advertising and marketing for 30 years, I don't think you're really capturing the fans attention it, it all kind of blends into each other you know what i mean i mean the guests are pretty much you know somewhat the same you know the same artists the same writers the same folks but you i couldn't tell i'm talking to you now but honestly my wife does about 30 online calls a day with her work she works internationally it just kind of blends into each other so i think from a point of view from a marketing standpoint i don't think the brand awareness is going out there with the big shows because people just don't seem to remember oh was that you know, Joe Blow's con, or was that Ishka Bibble's con? I don't remember anymore. I was just on a Zoom call, so. I think it might help somewhat, but yeah, probably not as much as they would hope. No, no. Now, you have this physical con coming up. Yeah, we're going to and... be back uh, July 30th, August 1st. Lock on wood, fingers crossed, you know. So what's interesting about your situation, since you have it at the Mohegan Sun, you are actually not held to state law that's kind of like a misconception because i don't live on the reservation there you know folks have said oh you know you don't have to follow connecticut state law you could do what you want that's kind of not really possible you know what i'm saying that's kind of out there i mean one i'm a true blue boy scout i couldn't lie if i had a gun pointed to my head and you know it comes at the end of the day it's all about being safe look, I don't need the dollar that badly that I'm going to endanger someone's life and say, oh, well, Connecticut says you can't do it. I'm going to go ahead and, you know, buck the system and do it my own way anyway, because I'm on Native American uh, reservations. We're not going to, and Mohegan Sun's not going to do that either. They're not going to jeopardize their reputation and their clientele for a Comic-Con for three days. At least I'm, I'm not. I'm glad to hear it, because there are some who would be, yeah, you well, know, hey, you know, I'm going to take advantage of the situation and I'm glad to see you're not. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. But what can we expect different about this turf con? What well, I'll are tell you, you what, already? I'll tell you what, the planning actually started last year because, like I said, as we were waiting for the snow to come and go away, <laughs> you start making preparations when you realize it's not going to go away. Like, OK, how are we going to pull this off? And it's one of those resolve. It's one of those you know, self-reliance type of things. You got to figure your way out of a situation, you know, and you, you dealt a bad hand. You don't give up. You don't fold. You just keep trying to work with it and come out of it. So we started doing floor plans where the social distancing, we're like, okay, this is what the CDC, this is what the department of health recommends. What are we going to do? Okay. So the good thing is when you have a couple hundred thousand square foot expo center, that's a lot of room. And you just start spacing people apart. And then you go, okay, we'll do that. Well, we'll make sure there's masks everywhere. And the Mohegan Sun, like I said, they're not just in the business for comic book conventions. They run a full-fledged casino and restaurants and all that every day. So they have uh, thermal checkers, uh, temperature checkers when you walk through the doors. So if you run into fever, I think it flags you and 
they, they come over and they say, let's take another temperature to make sure you, you're not sick or anything there. And then they have masks. Of course, you have to be masked up the entire time you're at the show or at the uh, casino and the expo center. And there's hand washing, there's sanitizers, stations all over the place. So all the basic common sense things that you could think of, we were already planning that out. And I mean, to the last minute, I was like, maybe we could pull this off. Maybe we can actually make this a safe event. Maybe we can do this. But then when you're working with, you know, the governor and the health department, they say, look, we don't want to have indoor events more than, you know, 200 people. Then you start being realistic about it. You're like, well, how am I going to pull off a show where you're getting 25, 30,000 people? It's not going to, it's not going to work. And, and then this just comes down to it. If it's not going to be the same type of thing, you, 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 as much as I hate to say, it, you just sit back and you wait, you go, okay, we're going to pull the plug. And this is what we did last year. And then even just a couple of weeks ago, I was like, well, how are we looking for this year? And I call Mohegan Sun and they're taking it day by day. And they're like, well, we're, just seeing what the numbers are and slow down. We think we're going to be able to pull something off in some form or fashion come, you know, summertime. And that's what we're doing. Honestly, if you ask me right now, what's it going to be like on July 30th, I have an idea what it might look like. It might not look as big and grandiose as last or two years ago, but it'll, it'll still have that same cool feeling to it. You know, we'll work around it somehow. I mean, obviously you need to still, hit certain numbers in order to make it, you know, profitable. You know, you can't lose money on the show. However nice you want to be losing money is not a good option. So no, no, not really. But you know what? I am fortunate. One thing though, I've never been a show that's all about as much as I like Chris Evans and Tom Holland and Tom Hiddleston, we don't get the really big, big, big mega superstar actors that come with a huge guarantee as well. I actually do pretty well with the, actors that people know and love we'll get something like henry winkler we'll get Mm -hmm. ralph macchio from the karate kid which is a huge show right now again and we'll get Chaz palmentary who doesn't do conventions but he'll come to terrific con we we get people that you normally don't see and the fans love it they come out they meet with them we were going to get nicholas hammond who you might remember as the first spider-man or uh from the sound of music he was actually going to fly in from australia last year before we had to close the show down that's somebody you don't see at a typical convention, you know, and I think I, I just are- wanted to know how he got all that hair under the mask. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, that's a that's a secret there. We can't get everything out there. Some behind the scenes. Well, you could have asked him, but that's what I said. So because I'm fortunate enough not to really, you know, have all my money invested in huge celebrities as much as I want to meet Mark Hamill. I don't have the, the cash flow that I could afford a Mark Hamill and stuff. So. I kind of keep it to the smaller crowd. Mostly my shows are all about comic book artists and writers. That's it. I mean, it's about the folks that make the comic books. So we've always been successful that way. We just keep it focused on. It's like that old saying, it's the comic stupid. And I'd rather have a room full of artists and writers from DC and Marvel and Charlton and IDW and all that stuff than a room full of movie actors. So I keep my costs down. You know, we don't go crazy. We don't do crazy stuff. Yeah. And any celebrities are like the icing. Yeah, they really are. I mean, I originally just started with artists and writers and then people said, could you get a couple actors in the first year? We had three, we had Kevin Conroy, who was the voice of Batman. We had John Wesley ship and we had Kihu Kwan who played short round in Indiana Jones and he was dating Goonies. That was it. Mm -hmm. And we had like 18,000 people show up and I'm like, Oh, okay. That's pretty good. I, I wonder what's going to be because I go to New York Comic Con. I've been going every year since it started. I never missed one. But that show is such a behemoth, you know, that's like, oh, yeah, <laughs> 200,000 people. And it's spread throughout the city. It's at the Madison Square Garden. It's at the ballroom. It's at the Javits. It takes over Manhattan for literally four or five days. You know, I, I just don't know what that's going to be like. I think it's going to take a couple years for that show to ramp up and get to where it was, you know, pre-COVID. Yeah, it's not just about people getting vaccinated, but people being confident in going into public in that kind of crowd. I mean, it's fortunate that, I mean, most of the attendees, in my experience, have been under 35. The vast majority of con goers are like 20s and teenagers. And fortunately, the COVID numbers haven't really affected that group. You know, they're pretty healthy. They're not really getting sick in that area of 18, 20 and 30 year olds. It tends to be older folks. So, I mean... 
they might feel invincible. You know, they might feel invulnerable. Like, hey, I'm, I'm Superman. I don't have to worry about this. But maybe they'll come back in bigger numbers. You know, so let's we can we hope. See. But- and it, I think people want to. People like being sociable. You know, I mean, my son loves basketball, and he. He, he can't wait to go back to see the Brooklyn Nets play in person. He wants to go back and stand in a crowd and shout and yell. I mean, it's it's not the same thing watching at home on TV as much as he wants to, you know. Even movie theaters, you know. So oh, yeah. Be lovely I, to sit in a movie theater with a bunch oh, of people yeah. you don't know. and That's just... my favorite. That's what I, I honestly I miss that the most because I review movies for the radio station here. So I'm always at the show. Every week I'm going to see a new movie. And I went four times last year and I'm like four movies in a year. Oh my God. That hasn't happened since I was like three. Tell people where they can find out more information about Trificon and CT GamerCon. Oh, for goodness sakes. I don't stop talking about it. If you haven't figured it out. Uh, Trificon is on Twitter. At it's Trificon. Uh, CT GamerCon stands for Connecticut GamerCon. That's at CT GamerCon. But yeah, honestly, just check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, every social media. You know, I'm out there talking about this stuff. And we'll put all those links in the description below. Oh, yeah. The websites. Yeah. And yeah, check them out. Well, we look forward to end of July, beginning of August for Trificon. Yeah. Hopefully we're there with bells and on. Thanks for talking to us today, Mitch. Thanks for having me. Thanks everyone for watching this too. Um, you can check out, we got some other videos over there and down there you can subscribe. You can follow us on the social things and as always have fun mm-hmm. and follow your fandom.